When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Most of the times in your household, the big shots are called by the breadwinner. And the thing is, when it comes to cars, you have to buy something that's practical and dailyable. That means the car is usually mundane and boring. But the beauty of tuning is that you can make a boring car into something that's very exciting. Just like this thing over here. This is a Skoda Karoq and it has been tuned all the way up to stage 2 and I'm going to tell you all about it today. This is the 1.5 TSI engine. It's more or less the same engine that you can find in the Virtus, Slavia, Koshak and Taigun 1.5 TSI variants. Uh, the only thing is the Virtus, Slavia and all of those cars are not tunable in the 1.5 TSI guys. Whereas this thing is actually tunable because it's a CBU unit and most probably the ECU is a little bit different. Now, the owner of this car has done quite a lot of mods. You have an ITG performance air intake, you have a custom uh, 3 inch stainless steel uh, DCAT downpipe and a full system exhaust. Along with that, you have a stage 2 ECU and TCU tune from Code 6 which enables launch control and it has some v uh, VCBS tweaks. And overall, this thing is quite a monster for a family SUV. It makes 210 horsepower and 350 Nm of torque and it sounds absolutely nuts. Let's have a listen. When it comes to looks, this Karok is a proper sleeper. First of all, the owner has blacked out all of the chrome bits on the car and from the front, it looks super menacing. And you can definitely see that the new Kushak has definitely taken a lot of inspiration from the Karok. It looks like a baby Karok essentially. Let's head over to the back because that's where the real party is for this Karok. And once you come to the rear, this is where you get hints that this is not a stock car. First of all, you have this hydro dipped carbon fiber spoiler at the rear and then you have these crazy looking quad tailpipes at the rear which sound absolutely insane just like you heard right now. Apart from that, the car looks pretty much stock and like I said, it's been completely murdered out to give it that stealth look. Now the owner is definitely looking to source some really nice looking wheels for this car. Uh, the brakes are also currently stock but they seem to be sufficient at the moment. So let's quickly get into the interior, talk a little bit over there and then head out for a drive. And once you hop into the interior, the owner has still tried to keep that special factor of driving a tuned car. So as you can see, you have this amazing looking carbon fiber steering wheel with these massive paddle extenders. But apart from that, it's a stock car on the inside. You get this really nice looking digital instrument cluster which is very similar to a VRS. You have the massive tachometer in the middle and this thing is like a mixture of a lot of different Skoda cars that we've seen over the years. It has a little bit of Kodiak, it has a little bit of a VRS or an Octavia and it still resembles a little bit of the newer Kushak variant as well. This thing has a 7-speed dual clutch transmission, the DQ200 and you guys probably already know our take on it that it's not the best transmission for tuning purposes but I'm really excited to drive this thing and let's just start up the car and take it out for a quick spin key not detected the Indian car market is in a pretty peculiar spot right now you don't want to buy a first-hand car and take that hit of depreciation and you don't want to do the labor of finding a clean second-hand car and then taking it to a workshop and then bringing it back to that perfect showroom condition that you've always wanted well, what if I told you that TDH Classifieds has got you covered now? These three cars are our own inventory cars and we've done our due diligence in bringing them to that showroom condition that you've always wanted. So all you've got to do is enjoy the showroom experience that we provide and drive your car off worry-free. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to thedriversup.com slash TDH classifieds and get yourself the car of your dreams. Sounds so 
good. The 1.5 TSI is a very underrated engine, and underrated because well, not a lot of people have been able to mod it because it's been quite inaccessible in India because T Rock and K Rock owners aren't usually the tuner guy type of people. They have bought this car for family purposes. It's a good family car, and when it comes to the Kushak Virtus Slavia 1.5s, well. it hasn't been unlocked yet so you can't really do too much to it and this thing reminds me of something like a skoda vrs suv even on startup uh, he's program he's programmed in the vrs logo and all of the cool little things like that and definitely yeah it does feel like a carock vrs or something of that sort because the way it drives the noise the cluster in front of me reminds me of a vrs and it sounds so good okay let's regroup a little bit and talk about the car now yep sounds absolutely amazing the 1.5 tsi is an engine that should probably get a little bit more recognition because it sounds good it's decently fast the owner and code 6 mumbai are claiming that this thing Will make roughly 210 bhp and 350 newton meters of torque, which is healthy enough for a car like this. Now, the main difference between a T Rock and a K Rock is, first of all, the size and the weight of it. Uh, approximately, the K Rock weighs 250 kilograms more than the T Rock, but you are definitely getting more car for it as well. It's a bigger car, it's more spacious inside, and it doesn't have that coupe-like drop at the end that the K Rock has. does that hamper your performance yes potentially it might but i'm pretty sure that no carock or t-rock owner is trying to set a world's fastest quarter mile in their car so that doesn't really matter what matters is that it is an awesome little car to have as a daily now if i was the owner i would definitely get a valtronic exhaust system because well that's the easiest way to have a good balance between a nice sporty exhaust and something that you can drive on the daily so that is something that i would definitely consider i love the way the steering wheel looks i love the way it feels these paddle extenders give you that extra bit of special feel when you're driving and yeah it's a really cool build i mean i'm really impressed with the way this thing has turned out to be if this is a family suv and it's decently fast Let's talk about this instrument cluster because it looks very very similar to a VRS 245 instrument cluster. I wouldn't be surprised if it is the same unit as the VRS 245. So, it has this big tack in the middle which shows you your RPMs and your speed and then on the left hand side it has this cool little cool little kilowatt meter so it shows you how much power you are pushing when you have the throttle at a certain level. So that's a very cool meter I love the way it looks it shows you your horsepower and everything but I just can't get over the fact that this thing sounds so good Now there aren't two ways about it the Carock isn't the best handling car in the world it definitely has body roll and feels less sporty than the T-Rock Is that a problem? Not at all, because the Carock is a great daily driver and a road trip partner. Tons of space, a massive panoramic sunroof, and the plush suspension really complements the car's identity. Now, yes, if you really want to go all out, you can probably put some stiffer springs or coilovers. But really, would you really want to ruin the plush, comfy ride to take a corner 10-15 kph faster? That too in a daily family-oriented SUV. I think not. Now let's talk about a couple of shortcomings that the Carock has. First and foremost, the gearbox, the DQ200 DSG. Yep, nothing new. You have heard it many times from us. It is quite fragile and once you start pushing some power, it is prone to some sort of failure. Now yes, probably a gearbox swap is recommended, but that is just ridiculous money. Race clutches are also a good solution but again quite expensive. So yes the DQ200 is a slight problem but gearboxes after 2015 2016 have been slightly more reliable so you can relax a little bit on that front. Now yes there is an option for a big turbo 
But the problem with going stage 3 with the Karok is that it doesn't get an intercooler and instead comes equipped with a charge cooler which well isn't the best when you add a big fat snail. So an intercooler is a must if you're going stage 3 and then the 1.5 TSI roughly makes 260 horsepower. Now let's get to the build breakdown of this particular car. The ITG air filter costs roughly 8,000 rupees. The exhaust and the downpipe cost around 65,000 which again pretty fair for this car. And last but not least is the ECU and TCU tune from Code 6 which costs 50,000 rupees. So for just above 1 lakh rupees you have an awesome daily driver which sounds amazing, goes pretty quick and can also take you to your destination in comfort. So what are my final thoughts on this stage 2 Skoda Karok 1.5 TSI? First of all, it's an epic sounding car and this is a family SUV. That's the thing I'm trying to wrap my head around that a family SUV can be this much amount of fun. So it is a very fun car and sounds amazing. Finding one on the used market, it is going to be a little bit of a task but if you do find one, well, you can definitely mod it and make it into something of a cool daily. I mean, my ideal build for this thing would be to lower it a little bit, get some nice 18-inch wheels and put a ski hatch on the top. Proper water, proper water sea type of stuff. That's definitely a build that I would be looking at and doing. But what do you think about the Skoda Karok TSI? Do you think it's a car that you should modify or if it's better off just to keep it? Or if it's better off just keeping it stock? Comment all of that stuff down in the comment section below and this is Soam Saraf and I'll catch you in the next one.